Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to have to play my audio real quick just to make sure it's functioning. Perfect. All right. Well, you're in on the chat early. And um, let me go ahead and just, this happens to be just an ES trade that I had started. Um, wasn't even planning to show that one just yet. Well, let's go ahead and minimize that for now. We can go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the charts that we were initially following. And perfect there. So let me widen this chart a little bit further. There we go. Um, now, why are there commercials? It's just the way Livestream does it. Um, they do their commercial. Then it pops up. It's like a TV station. That's exactly what uh, the concept is. And if you come back to this, it will replay my uh, conversations over and over again. Though I have um, updated some of those and put them on YouTube to uh, allow for fast forward and stop. In fact, uh, the one I did yesterday um, should be uploaded on YouTube uh, later today. So. Let's take a look. Here's what PCL it and you know, I went around in circles for quite some time since we had the um, red trend change and we were looking for discount and most people were talking about they were just desperate for this gap to be filled as though it somehow has to be filled that it's uh, a magnet of some sort. Um, and while that can happen, there's no objection to it. It's just what we were seeing is as we came down here, we went below the red line immediately upon even the original signal, and we were looking for improvement on that, and it didn't improve until we got this last orange dot where we really wanted to be aggressive. Now, we have higher extreme on PCLN, ended up with an MBI, and we're going to have improvement here on the shakeout, and at negative 11, I mean, it's, it all looks good for PCLN. There's just no other way to describe it. It just all looks exactly what you would want. Uh, from a daily configuration. So some people say to me, well, you know, when do I look at doing options versus a stock? And it's like, well, this is a primary example of your near-term expectation for next week is a nice bounce. So am I looking at calls for PCLN for next week? Yeah. Could you go further out? Sure. Um, the still up targets are, you know, in the 630s plus, uh, not to mention the um, catfish and the red dot, which we happen to see right here. They have a target even further up. If I put my cursor over it, you can see it right there. Like just at the bottom of the screen. Let me go a little higher. There we go. So you can see it's 650 upside target. So it's still another $40. It's a decent move. You know, nothing to complain about that. But uh, let's take a look at some other stocks. And if you've got a preference, just go ahead and. Um, Type it in the chat, and um, we'll go from there. You know, I did change the format a little bit. So um, whether you go to live stream or see it from Trade the MBI, I think live stream gives you um, some different options as to chart quality. You can pick uh, high, medium, or low, depending on your bandwidth. So you may have a little more flexibility there than um, seeing it at uh, Trade the MBI uh, HTML. But you, they both still have the chat, so you can still the chat set up either way. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to that Apple 10 minute that we saw because it was happening at the very time where I was talking about uh, the market being in a um, downward move. And uh, while that one uploads, I figure we'll go ahead and take a look at DAC because what we were seeing from a 30 minute SPY event and as well as from the ES was um, unresolved uh, red dot short. And so when I was getting the 10 minute signal, I was pointing out, you know, you're facing this downside pressure. And so when we went past uh, six periods in the last signal, it was like, hey, it didn't work out. You've got to move on. You, you know, um, don't I wish they all, you know, worked within the first two minutes uh, every single time? Yeah, but they don't. And if these guys aren't getting their money after a set move, they're going to start fading out of their position as well, unless you get a new one. Okay, so when you get a new situation, fine. You know, at this particular point, they lined up. But what I expected at this particular spot, given what we were seeing from here, was a flush up. And 
So it's one of those where, okay, fine. You know, and that's why I wrote it. I said, expect a flush. And then you want to be picking it up on the way back up. And that's why I was talking about, okay, let's do a live webinar because it's going to be a perfect. Because what they're going to want to do is you want to sell into this um, setup here going into the OPEX late on. And then towards the end of the day, your late, I call them late Friday buyers, will show up. And that will turn the price around and drive it up. Um, you know, it, uh, we've got shakeout on here. We don't have the expanded ratio histogram in always like to do this. Let me go over here and do it. You right click on TradeStation um, because again, point out TradeStation's offering the 60 days, I think it is, uh, for the free and uh, worth an opportunity. So expanded ratio histogram, let's put it on our chart just to have it there um, because what I want to look for on this is I want to look for any of these kind of setups where I'm getting way outside the range, particularly when we've had such a narrow range. This lets you know whether or not they're fooling with you on this kind of setup because you can see that it's staying between the highway here. I'll expand it. So between this magenta and this uh, green line, everything's pretty much in normal. You know, they gave a little bit away when they did the pop down here, but didn't go, you know, into your extreme categories or anything. So they're trying to hold on to it, not giving themselves away, um, limited on what you can do as far as that when you're trading, you know, stock like this that doesn't you know, people talk about how huge the volume is. Well, if you're trying to buy a large, large block, you know, there's not a whole lot of volume in a 10-minute situation like this. It takes a lot longer than that to acquire. And unfortunately, when we look at the daily from Apple, let me put up the daily of Apple, um, not what you're seeing from that daily of PCL. All right, we just talked about that shakeout, beautiful at 11 on PCL at negative 35. Look at my voice sounds so hoarse. Does it sound hoarse to you guys? Hmm. Let's see if that helps a little drink there. Um, look at that. Still below the red line. And, um, you know, ideally your best case scenario would be they retested that low back down here to the 504 range, which was fine because it retested it back over here on this slightly higher histogram. I'd love to see that histogram move all the way up to inside the negative 50. Then I would be expecting a nice bounce from Apple, even within this setup. Um, some people would refer to it as a dead cat bounce, but... Um, particularly at the negative 35. So that's the kind of setup that you look for. The fact that it didn't happen, well, okay, then no, I'm not going to be looking to jump on a ton of Apple calls here. PCLN looked good, and this is why we did this review um, at the end of last week when we talked about the daily ones. We were looking at various charts, you know, because I knew that a lot of you were going to be getting these um, well, dramatic number of uh, emails for the alerts. And you got to pick and choose based on what the charts look the best. I mean, Google's chart looked good. Um, we liked PCLN, though we were expecting some weakness within its overall setup, so that wasn't too big a shock. Here, we weren't looking for a whole lot, given uh, how bad these shakeout numbers were. Uh, but at any day during the week, we could have had a nice improvement, and it would have been better. Didn't happen. So you just have to wait for it to take place. Now, we do have a good configuration when we look at this shakeout from Apple. Let me increase it a little bit right here. In fact, I'll zoom in. Watch this zoom in here. Ooh, how fancy is that? All right, the yellow line being below this blue gives us an indication that we've reached an extreme oversold over a significant period. Um, the key you're looking for here will be the first time the histogram moves inside the yellow. Now, that gets a little more advanced for people with the indicators, but it's always good to uh, have this kind of setup because sometimes I'll get people who will they'll, they'll just want to focus on one particular stock, and it's like, fine, but if you're going to do that, you have to look at it, the context of what's going on here, and this is where the first thing I always tell people to focus on is the trend. And if I zoom back on here, what do we see on this chart? Red. That's it. Pure red. So do I see red that's overbought? Well, I did right here. But in this particular case, I've kind of squeezed this chart quite a bit to get back to a green, which was way over here. All right, so that just gives you a clear idea that, you know, you're not talking about a stock that's, you know, poised for some, you know, real big excitement just because it's oversold. No, you've got to have the elements that go in it. And I had this, you know, I mentioned it in the last live broadcast where I was debating with um, Sir Isaac Newton on his uh, Stock puts had talked about um, a divergence in money flow, where he was seeing these large block traders, and unfortunately, 
you know, it's not that it's wrong, it's just that it's a little bit antiquated. It's like, would you take a prop engine plane across the country when you could take a jet? No. Um, but people still do. Okay, does that make it wrong? No, it just makes it slower. So it's the same thing when you're using some of these older moving averages because the computers have recognized that people are looking at large block trades, so they don't do it. They trade in micro blocks, and this is what we look for in our subsets, and this is why I talked to you about it, because while they think that it's random, nothing a computer does that's random when they're looking at a particular valuated price or they have to get into a position at a specific range. So, no, they're not completely random. They leave a footprint. And what our dots are recognizing is when they've left behind a significant footprint. Now, what limitations do we have? The dot doesn't say to us, you know, that they've met their target on how many shares they're looking for. Um, we do generally know what their preferred target range is, fortunately, with the dot setups because they repeat it often. But uh, when I look at my shakeout, I know that they don't have a whole lot of participation. And you just have to recognize that. It is not a crime or anything. It's just the reality of the, the current setup. Um, all right, so um, you know what? Let's plop up. Let me minimize this down here. Let's see what the future setup is doing. What do we have? 15 contract? Oh, that's fine. What I did was, um, and what I wanted to show about this was on your trade station, the simple, com, you know, the way it works. Uh, in this case, I have OSO order. And if you click the little line here, um, it just lets me pick how many offsets um, outside of the actual entry um, that I can pick. So I can increase this by clicking it. I can type in a number. Um, it just happens to be 12 ticks. Over here, you can pick all different entries, two longs, two shorts, two longs, one exit. Uh, you know, the options are endless. But it makes it simple because I can walk over here and I can just click the blue side and it will place my buy order. And um, you can just say yes or no. Um, I can turn the feature off that's asking that question um, and it will just automatically buy that on a one click. Um, all right, so if we click this, it should give us a fill if we get a dip to it. Well, let me make sure I have my sound on because I always love listening to it where he says order filled. Um, but before we do this, let's actually take a look at an ES chart. You think that would be a good idea before we just, uh, you know, decide to apply some uh, <laughs> serious money to a chart right there? All right, here's the daily ES. So overall, from the daily standpoint, interesting red trend, still below the red uh, line, looking for low retests um, from an overall market standpoint. So that's fine to have that. Uh, if we look at the ES from a shorter, this is a 15 minute chart. And we had our buy signal there. We're not quite down below there. Let me move to a 10 minute, but I think there's nothing wrong with buying this particular setup. It's not super duper by any stretch of the imagination, but for example purposes, we can afford it. We're still going to be generally long the market anyway going into the weekend, which I know just freaks people out. I don't know why that's such a big deal. Uh, it's not that complicated. Um, obviously, we know what the um, downside possibilities are, um, but the upside is far more dramatic um, should something take place over the weekend. And generally, we're seeing enough bifractals effect from even my MBI Opus. Um, we were seeing a significant number of um, buyers within the overall setups there. Though it's been kind of interesting because I mentioned it in uh, my daily report. Bizarre readings between the futures versus um, the cash index. And uh, they're not really in alignment. I don't consider that a great setup when you don't have um, equality amongst the, the various setups. Let me pop this back up here and make sure that I'm not missing any questions. Yeah, the... Um, extremes are still below the red line on Apple from its uh, intro, but notice the rise in the extreme too. That's also something to pay attention to from its extreme lows at a higher level. You're now at a lower level. This is that kind of flush, but it's on a higher extreme even though it's still below the red line. Any other stocks look poised? We'll go through a bunch of different little stocks real quick and take a look at them. Um, I'm trying to get my 10 minutes up here for the ES. 
All right, 10 minutes, still below the red line, deep red trend, no new dot by fractals. Yeah, it's not that thrilling, but ah, this is not bad. Power momentum. Finally, so we went from this cascade, and I said, I love to look at these because you can generally just flip through a chart real quick and start seeing, and you look for these big wick differences between the cyan and the yellow, where the yellow is above, and then you start to look for it to narrow. And that's the beginning of your final capitulation move. And then when you get this real steep dip right here, where you almost see no blue at all, and then the transition. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take advantage of uh, a little bit of a dip. Let's get 1403. It's going to come down there. All right, so we put the order in. You see, when I put the order, it puts it a contingent profit target, and then a stop. And so we'll just add to the stop right here by dragging it, and it just asks you to move it down. So you can play with wherever you want those. I mean, some people want to play for a little tick here, there, the other way. You can do any of those. Um, that makes it easy. So let's go ahead and just round through a couple of uh, daily charts to kind of see where they're at. Get rid of the ES. There was the Apple. Well, it's still fake. It's way back in there. Um, now it's starting to look decent from a stream histogram setup. Just want that's what I wanted to see, that crossover right there. And there you go, your new fractals. And so people with the dot alerts all of a sudden should start to get emails here in a moment. And it will be like, time to buy. And this one I would consider a much better signal because I expected the flush out on this first one. Um, this one definitely, to me, seems more attractive, particularly with the market sell off where it is. So just point that one out. Let's move this one out of the way, and we'll go through a couple of the dings and we'll get these rearranged so it fits into here nicely. Tech is one that we went over the other day, and I pointed it out simply because um, it's interesting when you see some of these moves that come up, and then all of a sudden it's not a huge sell-off, but they get oversold quickly. And it's a good point because you, you're not going to find this on most of your oscillators. They're not going to go oversold on this type of move real quick. And so they often miss this next leg up that comes through um, when you get the signals, particularly the catfish will come in early. And um, in this case, we had the, uh, the green dot red trend and allowed for a little bit of a discount. Retrace or hold it long. Oh, you want to know what the concept on Apple is. Um, from a 10 minute standpoint, uh, oh, you want it written because you're having a sound issue. So if someone could just, well, basically what we want to say is on the 10 minute, um, we still look for that to meet its target, but from a daily standpoint, uh, you get some more challenges. Though for the first time, it's actually looking much better on a daily for Apple. If I just plop it back up here. Just need a little bit, if you get a higher close off of today from the MBI, um, that would definitely be much more attractive going into next week. And if you take a look at the close setup, right there, you can look at what the discount. So basically $12, that makes it easy if you look at 30% roughly. Um, you want about a $4 discount from that, so anywhere around this 5.11 range. But this is where I've been talking around. It seems like we're seeing a uh, significant activity right around 5.05 to the 5.10 range. And that's nothing different than what I talked about over here when we were interested in those areas before. And then we got the nice uh, bounce out of it, but got near overbought it real fast. And then it uh, cascaded from there. Let's see some other daily charts real quick, though. Is that more Apple? You know what? Uh, we also have the... This will be easy because then I can just click some. Let's look at Google's daily. Thank you for that, Jack, letting him know. It would be too tough for me to type, and we'll talk about the different setups overall. All right, so here's Google. We were talking about this before. What I was looking for on Google in this particular kind of move was this dip below the blue line right here. Now, this becomes an attractive setup because oftentimes when people are just thinking that a stock is about to break down and collapse, you get this move that's between this blue and the red. And it doesn't dip all the way down the red, um, but it becomes very attractive, particularly after your first bounce up, uh, particularly above the warning line on the shakeout, you then begin to start your next cycle upward on the shakeout. And this one becomes the key because 
you expect that when you take out this high coming back up here on Google on this next move that the shakeout matches and oftentimes it, it, it doesn't and if it doesn't that's usually when you're going to get um, your double top or your lower high than the previous high um, that's kind of where I chuckle a little bit where people automatically just assume that when a price comes back to uh, another top that they automatically say double top well I'll see oftentimes where you're getting to a double top and you've already started to have a matching shakeout and I'm looking for the breakout to the upside not to the downside on that particular case because you can see the momentum has built up with it and so it does become helpful in kind of um, gauging which ones are going to be breaking out, which ones are going to be breaking down. Now we can see that there was some serious um, sub potential right here from the power momentum. Looking at that now, but that's converted here uh, today. And not much of a price move. But see, this is where it gets you. This is the little subtlety of it. You know, they acquire a little bit at a time, and all of a sudden you see this change. Order filled. Oh, I think everyone heard that one. So that would have been the ES for it dipped down to my projection there. Um, pop it back up. So that should have filled it right there. So a little shake out of that one and adds into the setup. So that was fun. <laughs> Order filled. And, uh, you can get that with the alerts if you have uh, TradeStation and you're getting the, uh, you have the ind indicators and the dot alerts come up. It will talk to you. You can record your own um, conversation if you will and it will uh, speak to you but um, going back to Google here we can look at also the um, expanded ratio histogram popped well up here the fact that you have the orange well above um, positive for this green trend maintaining itself um, and also the fact that the cyan is all the way up here at the plus eight is actually bullish not a bearish setup. If this had been in the negative territory and you were spiking up above these levels, um, yeah, I would be concerned about a retrace. Um, that's kind of what you've seen from uh, Apple in a lot of ways. Let's plop in another daily. What do we got here? Oh, ISRG. We went over this one a little bit this morning. Talk about, uh, and it was funny because we talked about ISRG when this off the highway setup came in on this green dot and I was pointing out when a green dot is not a buy okay and in this particular case it was unique setup because we dip below the red line and we expect those lows to be retraced well sure enough not only the low get retraced but it stayed below the red line and it continued and this is also part of what I call um, my ratio histo uh, psi and what we were looking at was the daily of the ES and if I put the daily of the ES we can start to see it that's the 10 minute Here's the daily, right here. Same setup, exactly. And it came after it happened in, on ISRG because I was showing right here when we had the red dot originally and then ISRG put that signal in. And I'm like, well, if the market had done that, we would have been very negative on the market beyond where we were already negative on the market to say because it had a red dot short. All right. But then we had that, uh, you know, kind of crazy Ivan move right here. Let me move the 28 out of here. Where we hit the... Um, red dot target moving down, but then we also dipped below the red line of the uh, extreme histogram. And so when the futures came through and we popped back up a little bit, I told everyone, I said, yeah, you know, yeah, I understand it was a nice buyback on there, but unfortunately, we know that the dip below the red line were likely to retrace to that low. And um, at that particular point, we were also expecting that we were likely to turn to red trend. And so even when this next uh, extreme bifractal came in right here, at the 1390 we weren't immediate buyers of it we wanted the discount because we were looking for a discount right here so what did we do uh, trade the MBI members sold 60 SSO puts looking to we wanted the shares but if we didn't get exactly the retrace we wanted we wanted to have at least the premium and then I told those who didn't sell puts just wait for it to dip below and then potentially you can even trail it lower and um, gosh if I flip back to our member screen. I can kind of point that one up. It's right here. So this was kind of the chart we were talking about. Let me adjust it for you. you kind of see. So this is what I showed to our members where we were talking about it, where we came down the other day, dipped below that 50, uh, 859, and that's when I started getting a ton of buy signals. And at that particular point, it was like, okay, yeah, you want to take advantage of that one. And if you got back up to the 60, I suggested take the money and run for the, you know, one day move 
um, can you beat that? Um, in this case, you know, we were looking to get the shares, um, and our cost basis would be around 59.25, which is fine because we expect it to be near oversold at that particular point. And you can see from a market standpoint, it looks like it's going to be pretty close. Some people think that that's um, crazy under the circumstances. But, you know, if you're going to rely on the news and those setups, um, you're, you're always going to have difficulties because the current news, the those aren't going to give you any details that uh, um, the guys that normally trade setups, um, they're not going to uh, be going off of the news. They're usually going to get it early. And um, in this particular case, uh, you know, it's reasonable. It's not an aggressive play. And by selling the put in that particular case, we were looking to potentially catch the premium. And if today popped at all, we probably would have made the money. I still would have been looking for the shares. Um, the fact that we're weak uh, doesn't really phase me that much. Um, Apple Target now looking good. Let's take a look at where that 10 minute is. That doesn't look like it's moved a whole lot of anywhere. Let's move that ASRG out of the way. ES Daily. It was just good to point out that ES Daily because it had the same pop as that ISRG. And what we were looking for, though, was the, um, and it was interesting because on the INX, the orange was on top of the yellow, which uh, reflects a little bit of a difference in the ratio that we were getting on the futures. No ADR. No, what's the definition for that on the ADR? Spell that one out for me. Um, let's go to some other dailies real quick while we've got an opportunity. Well, there's a Facebook 78 minute. Had a red dot in red trend. You want to look for that discount so that it opened up lower. That would have been the op uh, opportunity. And nice pop back up from it. So that was fairly decent. Oh, and the C right here, this is when they say that there's data corrections. And you can always just click it and it'll go through and recycle the uh, chart page. See? And that just gets rid of it at that particular point. So interesting from a Facebook standpoint. We should look at a daily for uh, that. In fact, it might be easier if I just do them right here. Now this chart has everything on it, so let's use it. Because it's kind of good, because here you can begin to see what I was talking about in PCLN, where early on, uh, the beginning of the week, with the yellow above, and then it just transitioned just the other day when the MBI came in, and looks much more positive uh, for an upside push here going forward. Let me shrink these a little bit so that you can get a better view. And I'll bring it all the way up. You don't need to see the part where it says trade station chart. All right, so let's go through a couple more. Uh, how about Amazon? All right, now Amazon, interesting. Look at that, we got uh, two green dots. Let me just expand the range. We'll get out of it. You can see that we went from red trend to green trend. And this is one of the primary things I tell people to look for initially, particularly if you're getting the indicators. Um, red and green trend, it becomes very simple to even just trade that setup going forward. And then I'll tell people, hey, you know, you trade your green trend, you get your red dot short, you take your profits at that point. We also have the capability of adding the ABM which is the trend follower. And you can see that would have had you closed out back over here, but at the same time it gave you a buy signal, number 32. And this is another good thing with the colored dots. You know, that one's number 3, 33, 34. Um, you can go back and just look at the different numbers by scrolling back and see how they did. You know, 31, 32. Um, interesting on those because where were they in relation to our... Uh, same setup with the extreme below the red line, right down over here. Always good to point those things out because um, nothing you can do. Oh, you know, and I haven't even put together a daily, so people can't even get these unless you have the indicators. You wouldn't even see these. I'm going to try and put one together for an alert setup um, so that you can have it for a daily um, analysis as well. Because I think that would be pertinent, particularly when you get some of these uh, really attractive setups. Um, that a lot of people aren't going to see because their um, indicators are going to still be an overbought or oversold, particularly on initial quick moves. 
But Amazon, from a daily standpoint, that looks positive. I know a lot of people are talking very negative about it right now. But, wow. Uh, still below the red line. It's your first day you're moving back from all these negatives on the power momentum. Uh, let me move the extreme histogram back over price because I think it's easier to see it from an overbought, oversold standpoint if you get used to seeing it over price. So you see how beautiful dip here. I love this when it happened. I was extremely bullish and I remember there were a bunch of dot lurk members at that time and I was screaming, you know, this is going to be a nice buy setup and then we ended up with the short. And it was like moving higher on the short here. I'm like, it's still a red dot short, I'm looking for that retrace. And then boom, that happened the other day. And as it happened, it's like, okay, we got the green dot. But I said, hold off, you're still below the red line, still below the red line. And we're still below the red line, even on this red dip. But now's the time where you start putting in your buy stop above. And at that particular point, you know, you want to start, let me move this to price so we can actually see price in relation. And that's convenient because you can put the indicator. Uh, if you go to this side over here, you can just select which indicator you want if it's on the actual uh, same scaling. Um, so what we've got is the dip below the red line, which means what? Okay, the, the low right here is likely to get retested. Well, at that particular point, when I'm looking at some very positive bias, do I want to be a buyer down by that low for Amazon? Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go take a look at the ES trade, see how it's doing real quick while we're taking a look. Oh, is that miraculous? How is that possible? You know, and you know, it's funny because I watch some of these people trade the ES. They're looking for like one and two ticks, um, you know, just to cash out, boom, 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 boom. And um, I think you can get burned doing that a lot more. And that's one of the convenience things about the dots. You at least have a specific target. So you're not kind of uh, doing that guessing game where, oh, like how much, and oh, speaking of which, I might as well point out what is the upside target based on these green dots. Let's take a look. Let me just slide over it and see if i got enough room here. I need to increase my chart a little bit so that when I go over it, you can see it down at the bottom right there. So it says hawk up. That's the actual green dot and what it's called. And the target was, um, well, and still is 255.35 to the upside, so that's about $8. So someone says to me, oh, I'm interested in Amazon, and, you know, uh, is that an option set up? At, not at this particular point, with your below the red dot. No, you'd have to buy shares, because this may resolve itself next week, if possible. But with the dip below the red line, you're not certain of that. So in that particular case, you say, fine, I have to buy the shares in this particular case, or I have to go to a longer option. But in that particular case, you're paying a lot of extra for time so uh, this is where I say that's where you have to look for discounts, particularly when that trend is red, and it's a little hard to see it, but when I hide over here, uh, if you look uh, right in the middle there, it says TRND1 and 2, and it's red. So anytime you're looking at your info window, you can see whether the trend is red, even if you have a colored uh, candle on it. And this one happens to be the GAM, stands for the Gradient Algorithmic Multiplier. And... Um, that was the earliest version of a um, base fractal that I came up with. Uh, it was at the same time I came up with the MBI, and I began to recognize these um, set patterns of um, the buying. And uh, it took, uh, gosh, another four plus years after that to be able to refine it to get to the dots. And, um, you know, that's just part of the evolution of it. It takes a while uh, to see how they're doing it. And I'm constantly evolving the code because these guys are constantly adapting their overall setups. And that went back to the same concept with money flow. It's like anything that's involving these moving averages and that, um, it becomes light years behind now because these algorithms are trading so fast. And uh, you have to adapt to that. And they're not using... You know, these classic R1s, R2 setups, uh, the people looking for pivot points and that. Yes, you'll still get price that will pivot off them. Yes, they'll still work. Um, is their overall effectiveness declining? I think so. And I think you can see it in the returns and the difficulties a lot of people are having using them. And or they're having to broaden their stops. Um, and it was in particular, I thought this overall setup from a daily standpoint was bullish for the market in general too. Because um, you had just created MACD. Um, crossover for a sell. And these guys love those kind of liquidity situations where 
all of a sudden you have this huge number of people that are going to be doing something on bonk. And when they do something on mass like that, um, these guys love to step in. And so as the price declined, and it looked like it was getting very ugly, and then all of a sudden people are wondering why it spiked. Well, they had all these wonderful amount of shares coming through. They just started buying them up, and then all of a sudden, well, there are no more sellers. And these guys aren't about to sell until they get to their targets. And then you saw, you know, a pretty significant uh, up spike, in which case when you get that big a move in one day, you, they're not stupid. They take their gains. Particularly since we knew we also had the dip below the red line, we knew that we were going to be retracing anyway. So it just became an opportunity to utilize it for, you know, day trades. And these guys aren't afraid to get in and out, in and out. And they do it all the time. Now here's eBay. Let's take a look at eBay. eBay had some positives, and really nothing's materialized from it. It kind of went flat on us. Uh, it looked good. There was nothing special happening um, from its overall setup. I was concerned that we ended up with this lower histogram, was what I had described when we looked at it last week. Um, it had a lower shakeout in relation to the previous high, even though we were at the same. So I wasn't big on it, and this is where a lot of the stocks I was saying, you really have to stay with the smaller time frames when the daily chart, uh, chart is not giving you um, a clear indication that there's going to be some kind of movement. You have to stay in the small time frames because you'll get burned, well, I don't want to say burned, but you'll just be dragging out a 78-minute chart that's uh, particularly like on Apple where you've got very um, weak overall you know, swing trade possibilities to the upside. You want to be taking smaller, faster hits. Speaking of which, maybe we should look at that Apple. What's it doing? Oh, that's my PCLN. That was interesting. PCLN started out good. It was a nice short. This is the automated setup uh, that works um, every bar. Uh, took a loss on that one. Now, the trend is about to go green on PCLN for this one. And um, still short for this last bar. We'll see how that one plays out for it. But I was looking for my 10-minute uh, of... Google Daily. There's my Apple Daily. What did I do with my 10-minute chart? Now I'm going to force me to go into big. You can go into Windows uh, up above on the Trade Station, and it will tell you where all your windows are. So what I need to find will be my linked page. Oh, maybe it wasn't an Apple. Maybe we still had it in the. Um, Clicked a different stock for it. Let's just put them all up. Why not? Oh my goodness, I couldn't find it through any of those. Well, how crazy was that? I had to have it somewhere. Facebook getting close to that target. It's good to see. It was our Amazon Daily, old Faz Daily. Nice move back there, and I talked about this FAS setup here. Uh, that was a good one today, because FAS, um, red dot short from back over here, okay, finally hit the target, and then we ended up with a green dot buy, not below the red line, and perfect buy setup I recommended uh, from the open there. And, um, you know, mediocre. It's still got some trouble here, because if you look at the power momentum, still facing downside overall. But wasn't a bad setup, and particularly this can bounce very nicely um, on a pop-up, particularly if that extreme moves even slightly higher. That will be a nice, uh, you know, five plus dollars. So, uh, is there one for next week? Looking forward, yeah. Uh, and that's interesting because if you're thinking about a deal happening, uh, Faz would definitely be a spot where they're going to uh, want to apply some money, and uh, that would make sense. That would pop if the market does. So that's good to see that one. SLV. From a daily now, I had had some request about adding this to dot alerts. Uh, we were looking at it from a daily; it wasn't showing anything, but now it's starting to look better because you'll notice that you have the uh, extreme now, well above the red line, and yet price is pretty much matching. And that's the kind of divergence you look for, particularly too when I look at my shakeout. We were below the blue line here, started to have an increase at negative 24, and you still got some problems. You don't have. Uh, the huge inflows yet, but um, if you're willing to wait the time out on it, now is this a quick option play for the coming week? No, because you don't have um, your shakeout in a reasonable minus 12 area or better that would give you that view that you're going to get a nice pop from the setup. 
Um, combine that with the fact that it just had a very nice little run uh, from the power momentum where the blue was above the yellow, and that's the best move you could get. So um, we're going to need to see that recycled down. So it may test the low one more time, and yeah, that, then it would be attractive. So keep an eye on uh, SLV. Don't, don't get it out of your radar completely. Uh, there was eBay. eBay starting a nice move on that setup as well. But like I said, you had the um, lower shakeout. Now what you need to see is uh, the first improvement on the shakeout. And so this is an interesting one um, for the setup going back. Um, I want to see my first pop on eBay. So I think next week potential eBay uh, could be a good trade. Uh, so that would be something worth watching for, uh, particularly on the dot alert setup for next week. And uh, there was the ISRG. I thought we had that one. You know, let me go ahead and just, this is easy enough because I can just go and color the setup and then I can just uh, scroll through to whatever stock we pick. Let's look at MasterCard I mean, or Netflix. Why not Netflix? We haven't done Netflix in a while. Let's see, we're a little over an hour left uh, into the setup. I know I should leave. Uh, no, I found my chart. There we go. <laughs> so I just doubled it up. So it's easy enough to cancel it. You can just do that. Let's pick another one. Let me pick SPY because um, trading the ES long. You might want to see what the SPY has to offer from a 78 minute standpoint. I knew from the 30 minute we were looking for a red dot uh, retrace on it, and so I was not surprised to move to the minus 7 range. Um, thought we might even dip to the minus uh, 9 or 10, but uh, it's early. Still plenty of time. It just kind of fit in with like that Apple signal coming in, and I'm expecting us to have a, a whoosh effect when they do that kind of lineup. Uh, they typically like to drain it real quick to kind of clear out any stops because that's how they pick up shares. Uh, you're not going to pick up shares if the price is rising, no one wants to sell. So if you want to get people to, you know, give you a nice sell, everyone floods it. All right, so here we go with SPY, 78 minute from the previous day, uh, upside target, but no new signals from a SPY 78 minute today. So Netflix, uh, same situation, ended the day with an orange dot back there, but again, you want to be buying that at discounts, and um, pink dot, pink dot is not something that I offer uh, as far as any of the dot alerts, but that's actually a positive one as well, but look at how it got overbought, so this is one of those things where I like to point out when something happens, and here's what you'll usually see me do, I go to my drawing, and where is it at, I pick my ellipse, right here. Okay, and I come right up here and I draw it right around there. Because what you see is you have the extreme histogram and then boom, all of a sudden you're in red trend, you have a nice move, and you're already overbought. And it's like, that sucks when that happens because it's like you want it to continue, but clearly you can see, now the best case you get in this type of situation is you utilize that peak move and expect to retrace to around that low. Now if this had gone positive and we had turned green trend, fine, you're okay, then you can move forward. Um, and that's the key, is to, you know, look for those, you know, particular setups. When you get to an overbought situation, you need to be flipping to a green trend. How do you know when you're going to get to a green trend? Um, you're going to see a green trend developing, usually on the shakeout, when it gets to about uh, the even line on the histogram, gets to the positive of it, is when you're going to start to see a green trend take place, not before. Let me get rid of that ellipse. And let's look at MasterCard. Uh, don't have a 78 minute MasterCard on there. What's that all about? Let's go to MasterCard. In the interim, we should be looking at the daily for MasterCard. So let's do that as well. Put the FAS back up. And I know it's funny, I'm recommending FAS is down a dollar plus. And some people would be thinking, oh no, uh, you know, fiscal cliff, that's going to be a nightmare. I, I don't really worry about any of those things. In fact, I don't really watch any news during my trading because when you, 
you know, at least in my case, whenever I did watch news and that, and I was getting contrarian signals to what you hear, you're like, what, what am I supposed to do? And I found turning off news, outside sources, I don't have anything. I mean, I'll listen to music while I'm trading, just because there's no other point um, in looking at that, because I'm seeing what these fractal setups are, and how do I know what these guys are going to, you know, want to do based on what news comes out? And oftentimes when I hear something, uh, you know, the stock will do just the exact opposite of what I'm thinking. So I don't even try it anymore. Um, now, this is a nice setup for MasterCard. And so definitely I would be looking for MasterCard as a nice uh, play for next week. Um, you're coming off the green dot buy. Perfect. Oversold. Nice bounce right here on the extreme histogram. Um, all you need is a little bit of improvement on that power mo, and this could be a very nice setup uh, for next week. So uh, that's potential. Let's look at uh, GS to insert a GS right here. If I click it, it'll do it behind the scenes. I can finish going over Mastercard. I wanted to look at the uh, shakeout for. Um, MasterCard while that one loads up. When you see the little circle, that means it's calculating. I mean, because I'm running this camera at HD, um, plus all of my dot setups and everything, uh, it takes a bit of processor <laughs> power. So you've got this, like, well, kind of cliff on um, the shakeout indicator with regard to MasterCard. And it was interesting because, again, here, double top setup but it was rising so I was expecting that breakout over even though we had the gray dot right here and then boom right here you ended up with the higher close but lower shakeout that was time to get out and uh, it nicely retraced the low of the expected gray dot right there so that's fine this up target if we slide over there you can see it says 494.82 so if I slide that up you'll see the blue one there and um, we want to color the buy entry, our same gold color. Uh, but I would say anywhere through here is an excellent play for uh, MasterCard on that setup. Let's go back to GS. Look at a 78 minute. That's interesting. See, you see all these at the end of the day put in their little signals, and they've kind of just uh, sort of retraced. And that's because they kind of got overbought. If you look at this GS, one bar oversold, and then a bar later nearly overbought. <sighs> But that's what happens. And so people get surprised when they get this momentum move and they think it's going to continue. And it's like, well, sometimes it'll continue, but when they get overbought like that on the extreme, I kind of just chuckle because I'm thinking, okay, I'm not worried. I'll wait for the little bit of the retrace and then buy the retrace. Uh, let's go back and put a GS daily up, though, to see if that uh, holds any promise for the new week. We know that Apple has some promise. We liked it. Um, PCLN we liked. MasterCard definitely liked that one. GS. Why oh, would you look at LVS too, or Win? Either one of those. I kind of like trading LVS sometimes, just because uh, you know, for half the price, I can you know really compound and attack it. Oh, a little bit of a sip there. So, gee, now, see, isn't this interesting? How many charts now have we put up that we're all getting the exact same green dot by fractal? Okay, does this start to tell you something when you start seeing the exact same thing on the charts? I mean, these are all, uh, well, in most cases, in different markets um, and have a variety of different uh, setups going on within them. But, you know, you're seeing, you know, similar kind of behavior. And that's not surprising. And it's actually, you know, with as much negativity as everyone's talking about, I mean, look at these extreme histogram numbers. These are not like people are flooding to the exits here. So for all this um, horror in that, I, you're not seeing it. Uh, reflected in shakeout readings, which would tell you if you've got oversold. Um, you're not seeing these, you know, cataclysms that uh, everyone's talking about. So I, I just find that interesting, and it's not anecdotal because you're looking at the actual raw data as it's coming in. So it's worth pointing out that, uh, you know, and I hear so many people talking about putting on, you know, bear spreads, this and that. Um, oh, BAC, let's do it. In there, I'll just go ahead and add it in. You can drink a water while it's uh, loading. All right, Bank of America. Yeah, we had buys back here. Um, 
and even before that, captured all these little pops going in there with the orange dots, everything else. Um, it's just a little too tiny to uh, worry about trading this when there are so many others that um, fly. But, uh, you know, from a nice steady standpoint, we had talked about putting this in our uh, portfolio at one point. We had JPM. Uh, which was trading a little better with the options and everything from a weekly standpoint. Uh, you weren't, we weren't getting enough move from uh, Apple to have it in there. But we did get out of financials um, well, right before they took their downturn. Didn't get back into it because we were then playing a lot of the commodities, uh, USO and all of the different ones, because uh, we, were, we knew we were going to see more movement in those than we were going to get from uh, some of these. So even though these had a decent move, it, it still wasn't... Um, you know, what I would consider dramatic, as dramatic as we were getting, you know, some of the plays for CLF, WLT, um, even X, uh, we were doing a lot with those. Uh, but needless to say, Bank of America now overbuy, so a lot of people freak out on that particular setup. Not a problem, it's the second one right here. So you can see B of A hitting a new high, but lower shakeout rating, so I'm expecting that B of A, um, any pop in here, is going to be attractive. I'd love to see a red dot short, because I would definitely take that from a short play. Um, but for now, you're still seeing positives overall from uh, financials. And like when I showed the FAS, typically what I'll do is I'll go back to the um, the actual sector and put up the sector as opposed to looking at it three times ETF. Um, doesn't distort it because it's, you know, um, it would distort it if you're looking just at uh, like the shakeout net because the numbers are going to be different. Uh, so you're not going to be able to rely on, you know, 25 or whatever on uh, FAS being the same as it is when you're looking at the actual sector. So from that standpoint, looking at a sector will give you a little bit better uh, overall concept, just to point out. So whenever you're doing your analysis for uh, ETF like that, even like the SSO, um, when we trade the SSO, I'm looking at the SPY because the SPY is the primary. And it doesn't do you any good to look at a double ETF uh, if you think it's going to give you twice the better reading. Uh, it doesn't work that way. So um, you know, basically what you look for when you see these positive extremes, good to point out, uh, retest of those lows. So on B of A, that low, 1127, would have been the primary target for retrace. Um, at that particular point, would it be attractive for buying? No, I don't really see that uh, in this particular case, particularly with the Lower shakeout, um, and when it opened today with the lower shakeout reading, um, that doesn't look good. And that's kind of what we were talking about with the other ones that had uh, much lower shakeouts, trying to match new highs on a much lower. Those, that it's even worse when that happens. Um, some setups are bad, some setups are worse, and some just you don't even want to touch. LVS, let's put that one in there. I don't know, is anyone interested in seeing GLD or... Uh, or gold, I can put that up too. If you are, just go ahead and put a yes in there. LVS, dip below the red line. So it's oversold. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be liking LVS. Uh, very close now to changing on the power mo. So, um, from a dollar alert standpoint, that will be interesting for next week. Um, no, I did not give um, lows for. Um, SLV. Well, let's put up GLD because I think that uh, GLD a little bit stronger uh, setup with that. We had seen a buy fractal come in there. We looked at it from a short standpoint. We knew it had to retrace lows. Um, I go over this on the dailies, and um, in this particular case, we had the dip below the low. So. Red dot came in and told people don't panic about this because um, you're likely to see that low retested uh, as we come through here. And sure enough, uh, right in place with that. But look at those uh, readings. They're negative 27. So, you know, they're just, it's, this is like the Apple setup. You just don't have a large institutional support at this particular point. Not that there's ever really an institutional support for uh, gold, but I'm just saying as far as attracting significant buyers. So negative 27, that's, that's pretty ugly. Uh, no way around it. Uh, you know, are you going to get some pops in there? Yeah, but you have to look at it from that, from a shorter standpoint. Particularly when you see that the red trend has not changed. So, horrible? No. Um, would you rather be a buyer right in these ranges? Uh, you know, uh, now that it's oversold again. Uh, yeah, but it, that's not something you can look at it for an option for a nice play to the upside. You're going to have to uh, either hold on to the shares 
and train it that way because it's just not going to present uh, enough of a, a pop, as I like to think of it. You know, there are certain setups that we get with the um, lower lows, higher shakeouts. You know, particularly if this had gone the other way and was inside negative ten for the shakeout, I'd be like, absolutely, I'd be looking at gold from a very positive standpoint then. And look, there, I mean, from two years ago when I called for bull run in gold, um, you know, uh, it took off nicely. I mean, it was, uh, the GLD was under 90 at that particular point. Um, and I said, yeah, look for a two-year run in gold. And people were like, what are you talking about? And now it's fine. You know, everyone sort of uh, looks at it and gets extremely bearish, this and that. No, you know, we get enough signals on these that uh, you don't have to... Uh, get too worked up one way or another. Oh, let's go look at CMG again. We went over that one before. CMG. All right, so here we had CMG ended up with the red dot short, came back, filled that red dot short with the uh, magenta target right there. And then, um, like I said, it's sort of overbought, and I just had a neutral position on it. Um, that was slightly negative because of what we were seeing from the power momentum. And it's what we mentioned in the uh, last one. So I wanted to take a look and see if it had changed any. And um, in fact, no, it hasn't changed at all. So uh, no shock there. Let's see, should I go back to our Apple 10-minute? Uh, Let me click it there so we can do that in the background. We'll see what happens with it. Was there anyone else that I needed to go over that we didn't look at? Did we look at win? I don't think we looked at win. Let me go ahead and put that one up. See, it's doing it in the background for our 10 minutes, so it's going to take a second or two. You know, I'm pretty consistent with CMG. Um, you know, unlike uh, back over here where we were expecting moves because we got off the highway there, um, you're not looking for anything right here. This is just blah. It's nothing. Still expressing just a little bit of weakness there. Okay, there we go. Format symbol, we'll put up win, and then we should be able to look at uh, the apple. See if they finished the flush yet. With a little bit less than an hour, I would expect that in the next 10 to 15 minutes, we should start to see um, any Friday buyers, if we're going to have them. Computers working overtime. Must be some serious stuff happening. Yeah, a little bit more of a decline in the futures there. Uh, WYNN. Let's go there. Oh, Home Depot. Absolutely. We'll put up Home Depot in just a little bit. All right. Uh, whoa, nice chart for win. Green buy there. Now we get the setup, but again, dip below the red line. So I'm looking for a little bit of a discount for that setup. But nice with the power momentum so that's a nice setup i want to be looking for win next week then um to take advantage particularly in the uh, mid time frame is maybe even a 30 minute uh, or lighter so that could be an attractive trade uh, would like to see the next monday or whatever move above and again that's going to be you know year end who knows what's going to happen with that setup but uh, we can kind of see that there's a lot of um I almost want to say pent up buying, sort of uh, hiding in, the, in a lot of the setups. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but it's real money that these guys are putting onto the table. So you're not exactly uh, in a situation where they're uh, afraid to commit because um, that's what you're seeing with the dot setups. So let me put HD up here real quick and we'll take a look at Home Depot before we go back to what hopefully should be the final flush for Apple and the other stocks. And we can see about trading the stock for an upside. Home Depot daily. Uh, not bad. We finally got the retrace. Of, so this is always an interesting one, okay? You get the dip below the red line. Comes in, you get your bifractal in a red trend. What do we want to look for in a red trend? Anyone have an idea? Uh, yeah, that's right. We want to look for at least a one-third discount into the overall setup. So let's go over it. High low, that was about a dollar. So you want to be looking for at least a 30 cent discount. That would take you all the way back down to, uh, you know, 61.20 range. 
Um, in this particular case, though, you also know that you have this dip below the red line, so that low, if I quit grabbing it there, we can get there, this low right here at 60.55 needed to be retraced, and you want to see that retrace on what? A higher extreme, which we have right here, and so nice retaste uh, for Home Depot. Um, looks good. Unfortunately, you did a lower shakeout reading overall, but uh, it dipped below the yellow. It moved back up and in minus 13. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I would look at Home Depot from a swing trade standpoint. Very positive. You want to see the upside target for that dot. Right there, the catfish is 62.72. Also, the orange dot would be the exact same. So the only reason the dots move is because when one shows up, it's the stop. Um, I had to adjust for the other ones. Did I not put a target up for win? Let me go back and put that uh, win back up real quick, and I'll make sure we go over what the target is real fast. Don't want to leave you without a target. Particularly, it's good to know what that target is to the upside. Uh, now, you can calculate this target. Anyone remember the formula? I'm going to pause for a moment and see if someone types it in while I take a drink. Oh my goodness, all that dead air. And I don't see anyone typing anything. All right, anyway, that's all right. Oh, very good. Jack nails it. 1.2336 times the ATR. We don't have the ATR out here. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the average true range. Now, I, people say, well, this is a yellow line on your chart. Sometimes I forget and I put it on there. Um, I just do it so it's easy to see it real quick because I'll look at the info window. Now, you can have the info window open all the time depending on how many charts you are. Now, from my standpoint, I have two 60-inch plasmas sitting in front of me. Um, I don't I have plenty of real estate. I don't need to... Uh, uh, open up, you know, or just have one chart because I can have all my different time frames. Now when I'm recording like this, I have to reduce it because typically I'll have uh, 240 different windows open for all of these different setups. Um, okay, so the target for win. Oh, my computer's working overtime here. That must be a nice yeah, little pop. So they finished flushing the toilet. Um, on shares, and now we're getting a little bit of a move. A little frozen right there. One second, I'm going to mute, I'm going to sneeze. Info window should pop up. And there it comes. And in this particular case, your hawk up 114.06 for win. And um, the reason being, if we take a look at the ATR, which is up there, 2.47 for an ATR. And uh, you can do the math accordingly. But it's a good reference point. And I, I made that easy. Is that the exact formula that uh, is necessary? No. But I wanted something that you could, um, anyone, go through and find on a simple chart, whether it's stock charts, anywhere, or even, uh, they even have that live stock charts where, uh, stock charts where it's available. Um, you can't get a 78 minute, but you can do a 60 minute. Like I said, okay, instead of 1.2, go to 1.3. But, you know, I tried to keep the ATR in a simple um, overall setup so that it would be uh, easy to identify. And that's the general concept. Because I wanted something that uh, you know was practical. And for me, if I was on the road and wanted to trade by phone, um, even I could look up uh, from that standpoint. So that was the general concept bet between finding the ATR, seeing if that was one profitable setup. Because the stop at two times the ATR, I wanted to have um, a situation where it wasn't taking a 66% win rate to break even. That's no good. So having that extra, you know, 1.236, and then when you're getting into the mid-70% win rate, it was improving profit factors dramatically. Um, and that wasn't taking into account buying discount of red trend. 
that really, um, like I said, can boost your uh, overall returns on these kinds of setups uh, by doubling the profit factor. I mean, particularly even if you're at a 1.3, 1.4 profit factor, which just means you're making 1.3 times what your losses are. Uh, you can jump that into the mid twos, or like we are with our um, MBI Opus. Uh, well, you know, what? I'll go ahead and do that. Let's put the MBI Opus up there for a moment. I don't think we've done that. I have to switch uh, screens. Let's do this real quick, as quick as it can be when I'm running like four million applications. Um, oh, you know, I even put this one up this morning for everybody. This was the NQ um, MBI Opus. How do you like that? All right, it's Fallhawk. I'm trying to remember the last time I saw Fallhawk. Um, that's pretty cool. So, not a whole lot of trades there, but when they come in, you definitely want to take them. Let's go ahead and look at a performance report. And you just go to the View, performance report, and here's our performance report for the NQ. Okay, so this goes back to, scroll it down a little bit further, 2004, 78.99% win rate, 2.28 profit factor. We can look at a graph. That's not bad. We're in a drawdown right now from the last series of trades. So um, with that kind of win rate, this is a good opportunity to start uh, jumping into the NQ. Um, yeah, I actually think so. That's why I put it up because, um, it's, well, not a martingale kind of concept. It's like when you look at those statistics, I can look at the number of consecutive losses. And in the relationship of consecutive losses, it's sort of at its um, max that it's ever had. So that makes buying the setups more attractive in my mind. Um, but that's still a phenomenal win rate. And uh, can't complain about that one. Do I have my ES daily uh, set up on this chart here? Let me look. I gotta go to my window real quick. No, these are all. There's ES daily, but I don't have the MBI Opus on that one. Oh, it's kind of a shame because it's showing all the different um, setups. Oh, I should put up my. Uh, let's go back to our. Alert setups. I know. It's shocking. Who could have imagined? Yeah, we're seeing that we're moving higher. Oh well. We were down. You can tell everyone that we were down. We went way down here. Now we're up a little. And so, okay, what if I was looking at this and said, okay, um, oh no, uh, it looks like it's about to fade. I can just slide that down, just like that, go boom, order filled. And just like that, it sells. Okay, so, bingo, we did it live. That's not the first time, won't be the last time. All right, well, that's not what we're looking at. We wanted to go and look at our Apple 10 Minute. Yeah, there's the Apple 10 Minute right there. All right, so we had the buy signal here. We expected the flush. We watched it live right here. Got the other signal. Loved it. Wanted to buy the discount red trend. Not only did it give us discount red trend, Boom, hits us with an orange dot, and take off. Okay? That's what I look at every day. All different charts. All different stocks. Does it always work out? No. This one was pretty predictable, though, because particularly when we had this massive uh, plot below the oversold, then you get the little spike back. I almost refer to it as a mini dead cat bounce within the setup. So I was looking for the flush out, which is why I posted. I know it doesn't always make sense when I describe something like that, particularly, um, you know, it can only do so much with a 140 characters, you know, instantly when a signal like these things come up. But, you know, I just, I try to explain that we were expecting a flush and that you'd want to take advantage of the flush. This is what they do. So, will it reach its target? I don't know. Let's put the lines on there. What the heck? Some people say, oh, I did a trend line. No, that's not what I wanted to do. There's a trend line. I can draw trend lines. There you go. <laughs> I know that was funny. Just draw trend lines. To draw trend lines because how many buyers are on this trend line that I just drew? That's the question. 
how many buyers are on that trend line? Shouldn't this one break? What about that one? You know, this is my only objection with drawing the lines. There's nothing wrong with it, but what have you got to show that there's going to be um, a buyer on that line? And this is the problem. You know, Fibonacci is yes, I agree. Fibonacci is very powerful, but you got to know what to do with it. And just because you can draw a Fibonacci line, when you reach a 23% retrace, you've got to know, are there buyers at that particular point, or are they going to let that one go? Are they going to let the 38% go? What about the 50%? Uh, are they going to buy that one? You know, and this is where you got to have some of these other indicators that tell you, you know, whether there's someone backing up that uh, support and resistance. And this is why some of them work, others don't. And people get freaked out and wonder why they're only getting, you know, 55, 56%. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <sighs> See, talking, not paying attention. I wanted to draw the line. And what I wanted to do was add a new parallel. Because we have to go to the target, which is right there. We need to color it magenta. So you can see my discussion of buying the discount in this particular case, you're going to get a lot more value out of this up target, which, um, let me zoom the chart way up here. And this way you can see the info window in its totality. All right, so we have the extreme fractal catfish orange. And you'll notice they all have the same target, 513.22. So are we all going to watch it hit 513.22 together? Oh, bingo. Did you have your sell order in? That's okay. It usually is going to overcarry it. So there you go. You get to watch uh, Live Dot. How many people are doing that? Real time? I don't know. I'm just here to show you a different way, a uh, different idea behind looking at the markets. Um, it goes just a little bit contrary to some of your standardized indicators. Um, I'm not criticizing them, I'm just saying that I think that they lag a little bit to what real time. Now, are you clearly seeing that this is getting into an overbought? Yeah, you're overbought in 10 minute within um, a change from red trend to green trend. So I'm not worried about this particular setup as much as, um, you know, you would start to look at the uh, higher time frames. So. Was that a nice, uh, you know, two plus dollar gain for us to do on uh, Apple? Sure. Uh, can you just go ahead and put a stop in and collect it as it goes? Absolutely. And this is where the EBM comes in. Click EBM. And you can see it's reset the baseline right along there, and it can start to travel it. Let's go ahead and flip to 15 minute chart and see what we got going on for 15 minutes as far as continuation. Um, we already sold part of our ES. Let's see how it's looking. Uh, not bad. It is what it is. We're kind of on hold while um, <laughs> we wait for the uh, change in time frame. And that's just because it's working really hard now as you start to pick up uh, trades, uh, computers work in serious overtime. I almost need to go into a supercomputer. I think that should be my next investment is a supercomputer. <laughs> Uh-oh, why is there an F me from ban? That's no good. All right, so here it comes, nice little ride up. But again, it makes it easy for the trade station within this matrix as opposed to doing like a level two or whatever, because I can just slide these up and down. So I can just scroll it down. If I want to go up there, if I want to shoot up here, I can scroll it down. I want to shrink it just a fraction so you can see the whole thing. There you go. There's the whole chart. So if I want to say, okay, yeah, I want to collect mine at 1406. I can just slide it to 1406. Let's see if we get a pop. Maybe it'll go. Oh, you missed it. Uh, what did you miss? The apple? Oh, no. I hate to hear that. All right. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, DC. How is our Google? Do we have any new Google? We didn't have any Google. I clicked too many times. I lost my chart. Where'd it go? 
I'm so used to operating at uh, super high speed when I put on this HD camera to record it that it just sucks out of a lot of processor power. Of course, it doesn't help that, like I said, I have let's see, one, two, three, five. I have five workspaces open, and each of those has um, anywhere from 100 to 130 different charts. So, unfortunately, I probably should have um, <laughs> turned off a few of the workspaces prior to. I've already seen deck. What I was looking for is I lost my 15 minute chart again. This PY. That was the PCLN. How did I lose that? Facebook, is it getting close to the target? Uh, target up there is 26.52. So I'm still 50 cents away from that 78 minute target. So Facebook's got more work to do. Amazon, uh, the daily. All right, where did I put it? It should be a 15 minute, 10 minute chart. Shouldn't be too hard to find out. There we go, Google 10 minute, that'll do it. Aha, <laughs> one, way, one way to find it. Google 10 minute, I um, have the guru orange dot here, caving me rid of the ABM. See that. Dip below the red line. Hmm. Should catch a little positive um, end of day action on that. Don't want to switch that one. Is there any other particular stocks you want to cover? Uh, we kind of showed uh, what to do with um, the overall matrix setup. Um, Oh, you know what? I should probably even go over how you can take, for those who do get TradeStation, and you end up with the indicators, um, installing them. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, in this case, you just go to your analysis techniques, and uh, you can add it. You just pick the different uh, indicator. You can add it, and then you can put in um, whether you want it to alert you by email. So let me slide it in here. See, so these are the different setups. And you just add them over, and you can pick where they go and their relationship to each other, up, down. You can move them, plop them all over the place. And then um, it's just a matter of clicking it. And when you go to format, the actual um, setup, here it has intervals that you can do. Um, and then within the actual symbol, you can uh, format alerts. In this particular case, the alerts, let me put it over here. Uh, format analyst. No, I have to do it over on one of the sides. The screen's not big enough to show it to you, but basically it comes up and says alert and it asks you what you want to do with the alert. Any target for Apple, end of day. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left. Uh, it just got rid of that 10 minute chart on it. Again, you have to take these uh, shorter term ones with Apple, particularly when you're looking at that daily setup that is still ugly from a shakeout standpoint in that. Um, you know, some people are like, well, does it change the overall daily target? No, but you're so far away from this one now uh, that we ended up with this halibut signal right here. So that still has similar kind of up target, probably a little less right around the 540 range. So they're still there. They haven't changed. They haven't hit their uh, stop out point. So, yeah, these guys are still have the setups. It's just nothing really uh, super positive. Slight pullback or could it bounce back? You know, uh, typically when we're looking at the dot fractals, it's one, or one way or the other. Um, only a few times have I recommended. Uh, creating a strangle setup or uh, even doing a uh, combination, particularly because when you have a solid expectation, there's no reason to pay for a premium uh, on a put side. Now, what I'll see sometimes is we'll start in a direction and then I'll go ahead and buy the put after it's made an upside move. Likewise, I will go ahead and buy the call on the downside move if I want to create one. I don't usually just create them uh, in spread you know, right at a single price. If I'm expecting an up move um, that may have weakness, particularly if it's getting close to an overbought, I'll execute my put on the move up, but the call
call will have been executed on the way down. Um, I don't like overpaying. It's, it's just one of those things. Yeah. You know, um, when it comes to doing spreads and things like that, uh, I think the dot fractals make it easy because you have set targets. Uh, both upside and downside when it comes to specifically where they're coming in at and um, I think that makes it easy Also, someone wants to check on the ES trade, still hasn't hit still wanted the 106, that's a point away, well we can go for, now it's interesting because that's the valuated price right there, 1405 so we'll move it to the 1405 real quick, 1405 and that it highlights, so that's the average range price in between um, some people might refer to that kind of as a magnet, particularly on an OPEX. It's going to change, but um, we haven't moved a whole lot today anyway. Um, not been that thrilling. Um, Post-holiday, we'll probably get a more action, but that's why I was willing to do these kinds of things, because, um, you know, it's sort of a weak um, volume, everything else, because of the year-end. Okay, let's see what else we've got out there. Um, you know, I should go to my regular stocks. Because see, within my... Oh, I'll put it right up here. Within the um, set up here, I'll have S&P 100. i got NASDAQ. Uh, we should have Dow over here as well. I scroll across. Got to wait for it to catch up to we can go to individual stocks, which is just every single kind of stock you can imagine. I have my weekly options. They're all in here. So I can just toggle between them. Then I have ETFs. You got a variety of ETFs right here. You can choose your ETF and trade it. And you can just click any of these and it converts to the chart. So it makes it that, uh, that easy. PXD. I haven't looked at PXD in a while. Just running horribly slow right now. All right, now I think I've caught up. Let us look. At, oh, how about Lulu? No one's looked at Lulu in a while, have they? Don't know why I'm whispering. I'm the one who's uh, got the microphone. I lost this colored one again. Why do I keep doing that? That'd be annoying for you guys as well as for me. This is what annoys me. Look at that. It's flipping. It's taking forever. There's Lulu right there. Activate it. Alright, Lulu, Lulu, look at that. Lulu looks nice. Order filled. Oh no, did I? Yeah, we got order filled. <sighs> it shot back up there. We have some more to sell. We can do that. Pull that one down. Why not? Still see if we can collect our uh, higher target. There we go. Fourteen oh six and a quarter. Well, now we had fourteen fifty last time, didn't we? Let's move it up. And seriously working my computer overtime here. Let's slide this up one tick. Just for the fun of it. It's still changing something. Excuse me. Minor 
technical slowdown here. 